about you know you saying there is no shame but there's something about when we can actually say that out loud because it takes on a whole nother sense of power coming out of our own mouths rather than this uh-huh yeah i know i hear you right i yeah i'm sure i agree right but it just kind of rolls right off of our heads and doesn't really connect until we express it and say it you know and just to you know people are probably listening saying well wait um what about what if you've done something bad well so back to it, there is no shame, but there's accountability. Mm -hmm. So we've done something wrong and that's where we start, we start taking, we take responsibility for what we've done and we figure out the way to make it better. We get, we do it. And that's that, you know, for all, and all the people in prison, taking accountability and making amends, figuring out a way to make amends. And, you know, maybe your victim is dead. Maybe you can't do it. Maybe the family doesn't even exist, but there's a community that's been impacted. There's, you know, there's a, there's someone in the world that you can pay it forward to, you know, you can make amends, you know, you know what that is, you know what that journey is. And you, if you can, if you relift the shame and say, okay, we're, we're going to take shame off the table and we're going to move forward and make a shift. Now, suddenly everybody's, they're awake and instead of in this fog of shame that we've been living under, they're like, okay, okay, I can do something. I can, you know, the guys, the guys I'm working with, every single one wants to go, give back. They don't want to see those youth, the youth going into, they want to see this, getting an education, you know, creating community murals. They really want to, you know, one guy wants to create a STEM course. Another guy wants to, do a create a community center. Um, another guy wants to create a, a prison art uh, co-op so we can give back to communities. So these are the this is what's going on in the minds of the men that I've been working with. And this is I'm just giving you three examples. And then you know in the in the honor yard that I work in, those guys are off the charts. They're you know there's you saw some dogs in there. Mm -hmm. Those dogs go to vets. And, and other people with PTSD. Um, one of the dogs, I saw a guy give his dog, you know, they have to give up their dog. You know, they've been training this dog for a year and a little girl who was in one of these shootings, he gave his dog to this little girl. And I mean, you know, the alchemy, the alchemy and the exchange in that moment, you know, I still cry, obviously I'm still crying about it. You know, that little girl, has gotten healing from a man who did something really bad. Mm -hmm. And that, that exchange of love is forever healed and is forever healed in both humans. And that's what we're capable of. And we're robbing ourselves of what's really possible, which is a world of love and um, forgiveness. You know, how much, what have we not forgiven? Obviously we're really, we've got a debt of, of unforgiveness that's just st stacked up high because based on how we're treating each other, because the only way you can forgive someone else is if you've forgiven yourself mm -hmm. and we've not forgiven ourselves. And we've got a debt. We've got, we've got slavery. We've got abuse to native Americans. We've got Jim Crow. We've got uh, world war one, world war two. We've got the civil war. Um, we've got the sixties. We've, we annihilated, you know, the Black Panthers and all these, all these groups that, you know, there was violence involved, but there was also really a lot of good. Mm -hmm. And so we've got, we've got a, some major forgiveness to do for ourselves and to each other. And, um, you know, we've got to start with ourselves. So today, you know, everyone listening, you know, say it out loud. There is no shame and I forgive myself. You know, let's start there. And it can ripple out because each person can change the world. I mean, you know, you're changing the world, I'm changing the world and everyone here, and that's what I tell to every guy, every man and woman in, in prison, you can, you can transform the world because um, it's that be to the, that Gandhi quote, be the change you want to see in the world because it is true. If I've forgiven everybody and I've forgiven myself, you know, I'm an open book. You know, I don't see, I don't see people as, as, criminals as other because i've integrated that part of myself and that i've in i see them in me whatever it is i see the violence but i also see the love and it's 
it's all available to us. You know, all the religions get it. It, it just gets perverted, you know, and, mm -hmm. and let's unpervert religions and let's unpervert, you know, the messages and the algorithms that have been handed down from generation to generation that we keep ignoring or we keep, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, all men are created equal except for blacks, uh, Latinos, women, Asians. So basically all white men are created equal. Well, yeah. And you know, we have slavery in our constitution in the 13th amendment. It's okay to have slaves still. So, I mean, I don't know what that is, but you know, if there's some people in the law who want to change that with me, let's go. There's a, there's a guy in, in a Kern Valley state prison who, who would like to change it as well, because it's, it's perverse. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some perversions in our society that really need to be examined because um, when you take the, the word slavery out of the Constitution, you suddenly have seen the incarcerated as a human instead of as, you know, you know, an, an ox cart.